I want to talk about convexity. Convexity deals with the curvature of the price yield relationship for the bond. And what that means is the curvature means that the that a straight line relationship can't be used to approximate the price change of the bond when yields change unless the yield change is small. And that's where we use the concept of duration. And if you haven't seen it, you may want to look at the video I created on duration. So if we look at this, this is the, uh, on the y-axis, we have the price of the bond. And on the x-axis, we have the yield. And we have this curved relationship. And you'll notice here that I have a yield, y. And then I have two different yields, y1, which is a yield where the interest rate has gone down, and y2, where the interest rate has gone up, and y minus y1. So the distance here equals y minus y2. So we have an equal basis point change. And if you look at this, you can see that the difference between P1 and P, so the price change when the interest rate drops from y to y1, is this size this vertical distance here. And the distance, or the amount that the price changes, P2 minus P, when the interest rate goes up from Y to Y2 is this distance here. And we notice that this distance is bigger than this distance. That is, that when interest rates fall, bond prices go up more than they go down when interest rates rise. And that's actually a good thing, because if interest rates rise, the value of your bonds goes down, but it won't go down as much as it will go up if interest rates fell by the same amount. So if you're a bond portfolio manager, ideally you'd like to um, produce a portfolio that has a lot of convexity. All right, let's take a look at some some exceptions or some options or some some bonds that have options embedded in them and what happens is, is it changes this uh, price yield relationship so for example suppose this is the standard bond uh, bond price yield relationship here for an option free bond that is just a, a regular bond it has no call features, it has no put features, etc. If you happen to have a callable bond, and in the case of a callable bond, that's the case where a, the bond issuer has the right to redeem the bond uh, prior to expiration. Now, this is the case where they're going to redeem the bond when the price or when the interest rate falls enough. If they can refinance at a lower rate. So this is much like an individual who owns a home and interest rates fall. What do they do? They refinance their mortgage to save money. So instead of having a 7% mortgage, if they can refinance at 4.5%, that saves the money. Well, the issuing company does the same thing. So in this case, as yields fall, the bond's price doesn't keep going up as we would expect but starts to flatten out. Actually, it becomes concave here. And the reason it, it curves this way is because the chances are the bond is going to be called. That is, if it's a callable bond, the issuer is going to redeem it and refinance with lower interest rate bonds. So let's take a closer look at that section on this part here. Okay, so I've drawn that separately. And this is the case where we have what we call negative convexity. And this is the case, again, we have the same equal basis point change for a fall in interest rates and a rise in interest rates. And you'll notice that in this case, that the rise in interest rates is much smaller than the fall, I'm sorry, the rise in the bond price is much smaller than the fall in the bond price if interest rates rise. So if interest rates fall, the bond's price doesn't rise very much. That's this distance here 
versus the amount that the interest uh, the bonds price falls if interest rates rise. That's this distance here. So P1 minus P, P1 minus P, so this distance here, is less than P2 minus P, this distance here. And why is that? Well, because of this possibility that the bond will get called, so the price doesn't rise as much as it would if it were an option-free bond. So when you look at a bond, a callable bond, it has a re region of positive convexity, okay, that's the normal part of the bond, and then when you get to that certain yield where we start thinking that the bond may be called, then you get this negative convexity region where the bond's price uh, doesn't rise very much when interest rates fall. Let's take a look at a, a second kind of bond with an embedded option, and that's a puttable bond. A puttable bond is one that can re be redeemed by the bondholder on the dates and at the put price specified in the indenture. So bonds have indentures, that is, there's, there's rules or contracts embedded in the bond, and if it's a puttable bond, the person who owns the bond can redeem it early. Okay, again, this changes the price yield relationship. And how does it change the price yield relationship? Well, actually, it makes it more convex because this is the case where as interest rates go down, I'm sorry, go up, what you can do is you can redeem your bond early and then go and invest in a bond that has a higher interest rate, a higher coupon rate. So rather than the A to A prime standard bond price yield relationship, it actually becomes more convex here. So the price is actually going to rise more. So this is a common topic on the uh, CFA level one exam. In fact, this is these diagrams I have here are taken from the CFA level one reading uh, in fixed income. So if you haven't seen it, you may want to take a look at the, uh, the video I created on duration. And in a future video, we'll talk about actually computing convexity.